In today's timpani techniques video, we're going to talk about the proper methods for tuning a timpani. We'll cover the following topics. How the timpani mechanism works, intervallic recognition and vocal training, setting your pitch in five easy steps, pros and cons of the tuning gauge, and finally, holding and maintaining a consistent pitch. So, let's get started. Let's start with some different types of timpani and how they work. There are basically two types of tuning mechanisms on a tunable timpani, the hand crank or the foot pedal system. In the old days, the timpani was tuned by turning a T-rod clockwise or counterclockwise to tighten or loosen a head. You had to tune each lug to get the head even which was cumbersome and not practical for fast changes to the pitch. So, most of the literature wrote during those times had minimal tuning. Then someone down the line thought, if I rig up some kind of cable mechanism that connects all these lugs, I can get all these bad boys to turn at the same time, which led to what's called the chain or cable drum. And shortly after that came the hand crank mechanism coming into play. The problem with this system is that you are taking at least one hand out of commission in order to tune the drum, which eventually led to the pedal mechanism. Now you can pedal to your heart's content while still using both hands to do whatever you like. The pedals will move by either using the whole leg or just the ankle. Better quality timpani have what is called a clutch which is used to lock the timpani pedal in place. To use the pedal, simply kick the ankle out to release the clutch and swing it back in to lock the clutch in place. So without going into too much detail, how these things work is by moving the pedal one way, let's say up or towards you, the head loosens or makes the pitch go down. Or if you move the pedal down or away from you, the head tightens and makes the pitch go up. Easy peasy. Same deal goes for drums that don't have a clutch push the toe down to raise the pitch, push the heel down to lower the pitch. But this isn't a timpani maintenance class, so let's move on. It just so happens that I did a video recently that has a nice way to improve your accuracy in identifying singing intervals. So if you just click down here, oh, oh, sorry, up here, uh, it'll take you to it, toot sweet. Here's some ideas how to find pitches more easily. Let's say you want to tune a perfect fourth. After you find your first pitch, sing up a major scale. La, si, do, re. Then do the same thing at the timpani. But instead of singing the fourth note, play it on the drum. La, si, do. This might help you execute a more accurate fourth. You can do this with any interval. Or here's another idea. Find a tune that's familiar to you and use it to identify an interval. Let's say you need a perfect fifth going up. Think of a tune that you know really well that starts with this interval like this one. There's your perfect fifth going up. Make sure you have a tune that goes down the perfect fifth as well. Feelings. All right, all right. I hate that tune, but there you go. Now, go ahead and find a tune for every interval, up and down. No? Got better things to do? Okay, fine. I made up a sheet for you that you can download. If you don't like the tunes that I pick, too bad. It took me forever to find those lousy tunes. So, you might be asking yourself, how am I going to find my starting pitches? Well, let's see. You could be one of those annoying people who have perfect pitch. Man! A perfect A. But most of us aren't in that category. Next option? The ever popular tuning fork. Yes siree folks, you can pick up one of these babies anywhere where you can find tone deaf people roaming around. It's small, it's quiet, and dead on accurate. You can fit it right in your pocket. So it's there when you need it. So here's how it works. 
Just hit the forky part on your knee, then jam it in your ear. Ear, dummy, not hair. Now listen to the pitch. Then you can practice singing or just hear and match the pitch on the drum. This is also mimicking how the orchestra tunes when the oboe gives an A. You could also use a tuner, but only to check your accuracy once you've tuned your note. I would recommend not doing the following. Using a mallet instrument to find your pitch. Using a pitch pipe. Bah. Guessing. Bah. 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 In all seriousness, it's important to be very accurate when tuning. It's the one thing that everyone, no matter who is listening, will be able to tell if you are right or wrong. So, developing a good sense of relative pitch is important. Here are the steps I would use to tune a timpani. Step 1. Find your initial pitch. Step 2. Unlock pedal and bring the pitch to the lowest level. Step 3. Gliss up to your desired pitch using either a mallet or your finger at a soft volume. Step 4. Fine tune your chosen note either using the pedal or the fine tuner so that you are dead on accurate. Step 5. Release the clutch to lock the pedal. A few side notes on this process. When you get to step 3, I mentioned you can use a stick or your finger when glissing up to your desired pitch. Either method, finger or mallet, is acceptable as long as you're being quiet and accurate about the process. I prefer using a mallet at a very soft dynamic. It's quieter than a finger, plus it's the thing you use to actually hit the drum, so it ends up being more accurate in my experience. But as long as the pitch is correct, use whatever method works for you. Also in step 4, when you're getting the pitch more exact, I mentioned using the pedal or the fine tuner. The fine tuner is a handle that is usually directly in the front part of the timpani, but is sometimes on the opposite side. Turning this handle clockwise will raise the pitch, and counterclockwise will lower the pitch. Using a fine tuner will hone your pitch to a more precise level. For example, let's say you're using a drum where the pedal locks into these teeth. Your desired exact pitch might be between this notch and this notch, so locking the pedal into the lower of the two notches and then turning the fine tuning knob clockwise to raise the pitch a bit might be necessary. Once you have your first pitch tuned on the timpani, finding your next pitch is done by eliminating step one. It's very important at this point to use the first drum pitch as your reference for finding the next pitch and not to use your tuning fork. If your initial pitch was an A and your next pitch is going to be a D, tap the drum that has the A tuned, then use your interval training to hear or sing the D and then go through step two through five. After you are done tuning all your notes, take a breath and just check each note softly and correct any problems with the fine tuner if necessary. Your goal is to do this process very quietly and quickly with pinpoint accuracy. The tuning gauge is a device on most timpani that you can use to visually see where a note is. You should never rely on the tuning gauge to be very accurate though. I find it is better to use it as a helping tool. Here's what I mean. Let's say you've tuned an A and a D, but it doesn't sound right to you. But you have figured out that the D is a bit sharp or too high before tuning this note lower. Look and memorize where the arrow is pointing on the tuning gauge. Then take the pedal well below the pitch and come back up, making sure that you are not coming up as far as you were before you moved the pedal. Here's where you were, so you know you have to be somewhere in this area to be correct. You might be asking yourself, why is it so important to always come from below a pitch and not from above? Good question, person I can't see who may or may not have asked this question. The answer to this is, the timpani head will only be seated properly on the bearing edge of the bowl if the head goes from being loose to tighter. If you go from above the pitch directly to the note, 
the head will not have been seated properly and will most likely stretch further as it is being played, resulting in the pitch dropping slightly. Try this experiment. Tune a note from below, let's say an A, then push down with both hands like this, then play the note again. It should be very close to the pitch that you started with. It might be a hair lower, but that's okay. Now, Tune again, but this time come from above the note. Then do the same push thing again. Now play it. See how much lower the pitch is? So, always try to come from below the pitch. Don't be too reliant on the tuning gauge, because there will come a time when you'll go to play a gig or an audition and BOOM! There's no tuning gauge. Or, if an orchestra is particularly nasty, they might cover up the gauges so that you can't see them. Meanies. Practicing intervals on the timpani and feeling the interval with just the feet is a good way to prepare for this predicament. Try this exercise. Play this interval and gliss to each note. Just use the feel of the pedal in your ears to find each pitch. Your feet will get to know where they need to go. After some time, widen the interval. Then do it with the other foot. Same exercises. Then, go do this on a different set of timpani with hopefully a different type of pedal system. You could even practice this on a hand crank type drum as well. Your feet will become more and more comfortable tuning accurately without the use of a tuning gauge over time. As you do this more and more, gradually lessen the amount of gliss and eventually you will be tuning at the same time as you are striking the drum, like this. This is called direct tuning, and it comes up quite a bit in more modern repertoire. As you do this more and more, you will be able to gain speed. As you get better at this, concentrate on separating the hands from the feet. The tendency is that your hands will mimic your feet. Meaning, since you are making very fast motions with your feet, your hands will want to make fast motions as well. But if you have a very legato passage that requires this kind of stroke, you will need to train yourself to play this slow flowing stroke while still keeping the fast quick motions with your feet. Standing versus sitting is personal preference, but my feeling on the matter is you should be able to do both very comfortably. Now, how does this relate to tuning, you might be asking? Well, it relates because everything you do on a timpani when standing is possible to do while sitting. But not everything you do while sitting can be done while standing. If you have an abundance of note changes to do with both feet in a short amount of time, you will have to sit. Also, if you have to correct a note while you are in the middle of playing something, sitting will be a much better way to do this. Which brings up our last topic, holding a pitch. Here are some little known facts that you might not know. 
Temperature can affect the pitch of a timpani, even on plastic heads. Some people think that plastic heads will not move pitch-wise at all. Not true. If you happen to be playing in an outdoor venue, let's say a summer festival, and the temperature rises or drops in the course of a performance, the pitch will definitely move. So, you might want to have your feet on the pedals to be making finite adjustments while you are playing. Along the same lines, what if you are playing a very loud passage like this? And the pitch gets pushed down because of the force that you are using to hit the drum. It can happen. For those of you who use calf heads, you might be used to the fact that these heads can change in a matter of seconds. Any little change in humidity will loosen or tighten these heads. So you might ask yourself, why would I use them if they are so temperamental in the tuning regard? Because the sound they produce is superior to a plastic head, case closed. Not only are they moving all the time because of the barometric qualities in the air, but they can also move because of the dynamics you play. Here's an example. If you play a very loud roll, and then make a gradual diminuendo to pianissimo, as you can see, the pitch changes quite a bit. So you might need to be moving the pedal a bit to maintain that beautiful A you started with. Thanks for watching this video. Remember, Tuning accuracy is important, so make it a part of your everyday practice. Whew, it's cold out here, and it's dry too, so you know what that means for timpani heads, right? If you don't know what that means, go back and watch the video. See ya!